Yo, what's up, y'all? It's the MMA analyst uh, here for my first video in 2009. It's a little late. It's for the yearly MMA roundup. I'm doing one with Chase and a few of the other uh, MMA video maker dudes here on YouTube. Left my damn mic somewhere. Can't find it, so I'm going right into the into the the camera mic. So quality's probably low and ugly, but what can I say? I gotta get the video done. Y'all know what it is. MMA is important. Anyways, let's get right down to it. Uh, knockout of the year. I'm just going to mention a bunch, you know, and, and then tell you what I thought the winner was. Uh, of course, we've got Vanderlei Silva's knockout uh, over Keith Jardine, where he had him in the rape choke. He just mounted him, grabbed a stone, and dude was out for like five minutes. Uh, Rory Markham's knockout over Brody Farber. Um... Brody Farber was walking, bam, throwing punches, bam, bam. I can't get the videos. If I could, I'd just put the videos up. Y'all wouldn't have to see me reenact it, but tough luck. Walking in, throwing, then he walks up. And just feet stuck straight up. Um, he was out. He walked right into a kick. Nasty. We've got two from Anthony Johnson, Anthony Rumble Johnson. We've got the first one, sent Tommy Spear, sent Tommy Spear right back to... Uh, to farming. I think Tommy Spear quit MMA. It's not a joke. I'm not saying this, you know, to make people laugh. I think he really said, I'm hanging up the gloves and I'm going to start with the rake and the hoe and stuff. Not that I'm a girl. Um, so we've got that beat down where he just came in, hit him, knocked him, this, that, the other, just nasty. And then uh, in the end, ended up just blasting him. Tommy was like, just chilling, like, I don't even know what I'm doing here. He was just out cold. Um, and then we've got his his, uh, his revenge, avenging his eyeball against uh, Kevin uh, Freddy Cooper eye poke burns, where, you know, the first time he got hit up in the eye, poke all up in there, it looked like this. Ah! And then uh, after this fight, though, you know, did his thing, did his thing, bam, head kick, nice head kick. Um, we've got the up kick. Uh, Musasi over Jacare in Dream. Just Jacare was doing his thing, tried to stand up over guard, and Musasi was like, no. I put that foot, that was my foot. This, this is going to be my hand and my foot. Sometimes it's going to be elbows. You know, I mean, it's going to be whatever it is. I don't have much to work with. If I had a shoe, maybe, you know. But, anyways, uh, Koscheck over Yoshida. Uh, that was nasty. Koscheck. Blasted him. Now, this is ropes. He would have fell through the ropes, but it's not. It's a cage. So he bounced off the cage and came back like, hit me one more time. Or like they say in Detroit, hit me one more game. And then. Wow! He could have, honestly, I'm telling you, he could have backed up, ran across the whole cage, and did a flying, uh, like, wrestling, uh, like a jump kick or something. He could have done anything he wanted. He could have done like a spinning back kick to the face. Uh, he could have finished that fight any way possible. He had the time. Yoshida was not defending himself. Let's just be happy. He just picked a regular ass hook. And that put him out. Um, we've got recently, uh, a lot of these are recent. We've got Stevens over Dos Anjos where he threw that uppercut from hell. He started down here like below the screen. Just ah. Tiger uppercut, and dude was just like, it looked like he just pitched a bike. He was like, wow. That was a nice one. Um, we've got the double knockout. Uh, Sean Parker versus Tyler Bryan with Shoney Carter as the ref. These dudes were like, wow. And then they just both fell out. And Carter was like, it was crazy. Um, then we've got what I consider to be the runner up. Uh, Rampage over Vanderlei Silva in what is definitely redemption and like no more nightmares. He came through with the perfect ah, bow. And, and then he fell and then he threw two or three punches after. I think he was like, don't you ever do that again. Ah, and then I think he cried like in his head. Like, I did it. Ah. Like he was just so happy. On the outside, he was like, you know I'll be back. But anyway, you know what? That was a nasty, nasty. He just came through like, ah.
And the winner is, everybody knows, Rashad Evans over Chuck Liddell. Rashad was doing his thing, dancing, you know, whatever it was. Bow! Overhand right, nasty Chuck Liddell. Sleep. Gone. Rashad Evans has two of the top ten knockouts in UFC history. Uh, one of them is his kick over, uh, his head kick over, oh man, I can't remember, how did, I just said this dude's name yesterday. Anyways, he don't remember it either because he got need a few, but a year later. Um, and then we got Chuck Liddell, um, going to sleep, folded over himself. You know what I mean? This is the photoshops I saw of this were crazy. <laughs> Knockout of the year. That was some good stuff. All right, now submission of the year is a little different. We, obviously, we've got some good submission uh, possibilities. Let's call them submission submissions. Um, but there's kind of like amazing submissions and then like situational submissions. So I'm going to go through the situational submissions, which you know I didn't think were the winners, but they were cool situations to have a submission. All right, so we've got uh, Burns um, over Carnero. Um, and the, the situation here was Burns was like a blue belt, and Carnero was like a highly touted black belt, and dude came through and put him in the, uh, the triangle choke and finished the fight. That was a cool, it was, I mean, it was big. It was the underdog, and now he knocked him out. He came over, he was like, I'm a, I'm a jiu-jitsu blue belt, and you are pulling Carnero, and I just tapped you out. Of course, we had uh, Miller over Gurgel. Y'all know how I feel about what happens with Gurgel when he fights. Just another situation, just another example. Uh, Gurgel winning the whole fight, and then with 10 seconds left, really the submission started with about 30 seconds left. And then he tried to secure the triangle for like 20 seconds, and then with about 10 seconds left, Miller secured the submission, crazy, crazy submission. Um, C.B. Dalloway over Jesse Taylor, the first time ever a Peruvian necktie was used in the UFC, and I think in MMA, but I know for a fact in the UFC, so that was tight. Um, and then we've got the best situational submission, which was... Uh, Nate Diaz over Josh Near got to try. He, first of all, he got beat down for a long time. He got inside. He got crucifixed. He got elbowed. He got punched. I was like, oh, damn. Dude is going out. He did not. He came back in the second round. Got him in the triangle. Threw up the double birds. Was like, blah, blah. And then didn't even pull the head down. Was just like, I know it's in. I was like, turn the double birds into double PC. He really didn't do that, but he kind of did because the fight was over. All right, now for the actual sickest submissions of the year, 
Um, we've got Shinya Aoki's seated Gogo Plata over Nagata. He just, like I said, if you know what a Gogo Plata is, it's very hard to pull off, especially in MMA. He he, he pulled it off in seated position. He's, he's sitting on him, got a mount, he grabbed his knee, pushed it around, put your shin around the guy's throat, pulled his head forward, puts the other leg over. It's like a crazy submission. I can't even sit Indian style. And this dude's leg will like leap. Anyway. Um, we've got Dustin Hazlitt over Josh Berkman. He had the wizard. He jumped to the arm bar, so he's got his arm locked up. And then he just jumps over, gets the arm bar, drops back. Done. Beautiful, beautiful one. We've got Marcus Aurelio over Ryan Roberts. It took 16 seconds. It was pretty much similar. Um, he had the wizard, but then he kind of, he busted him up first in like the first 10 seconds. And then in the next six seconds, he grabbed that arm, wizard, jumped over to the other side. I think this is better than the Hasbro one, based on the fact that he did a little jump first, then got the arm bar, straightened it out. Very, very nice. Very nice. Um, and then we've got, I think we've come down to the winner, which was uh, Mitsuhiro Ishida over Justin Wilcox. Um, and this one was just crazy. Oh, you know what? Damn, I messed up. Alright, we'll give it like a little side award. So anyway, this is still the winner. Ishida over Wilcox. Tries the Kimura. Um, then he jumps. Uh, Wilcox jumps out of the Kimura. But Ishida rolls it. Transitions to an armbar. And like snaps dude's arm basically. I don't know if he broke it. But he definitely made it go in a place it shouldn't. Because dude was like, ah, my arm. He was hurt. Now in like just uh a fight you have to see notes, you know, put it on the sidebar or whatever. Uh, you have to see Datsuki uh, Nakamura versus Takoro. This was about a two minute match, but in the two minutes, it had I'm not gonna tell you who win or who was doing it, but it had Kimura attempt to armbar attempt, armbar escape. Kimura attempt to armbar attempt to armbar escape to side mount to mount. To armbar attempt, I think it was. So, took the back, switched, escaped, armbar attempt, and then like the two bodies like did this, like they each had a limb. It was like I got one of your legs and one of your arms. You got one of my legs, one of my arms. We're both on our backs. We're all twisted up, literally in a human pretzel. And then one of them sneaks out like, "Bow, I got you. I win." It was the best grappling MMA match. It wasn't MMA match, but there was not a punch thrown. Um, it was the best grappling MMA match of the year. It happened uh, at K1 Field Dynamite just a few days ago. It was an amazing match. Submissions, you know, 2009, they're going to bring a lot of good submissions and a lot of good knockouts. So I'm looking forward to it. Alright. Um, let's go to the fight of the year. I'm only going to name a few here. I'm not even going to get really into them. I'm just basically going to say, go out, find it. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Um, we've got um, Kung Lee versus Frank Shamrock. That happened in the Force. Uh, you know, Elite XC co-promoted. Has a great fight. Um, we've got Maida versus Torres. By the way, there's no real order here. Uh, Maida versus or Maida versus Torres from WEC. We've got uh, Uriah Faber versus Jens Palmer, also in WEC. Some tough decisions there. Like, just hard fought for the entire time. Then we've got um, what I consider to be also a, a really good fight of the year. And also is in another category, Fitch versus GSP, um, in which was just a, just an all-out, well, not really an all-out brawl. It was more like a one-way brawl. It was more like, actually, an assault. Um... GSP just took it to Fitch, and Fitch was like, I will not quit. And then the winner of the best fight of the year, in my opinion, goes to Eddie Alvarez versus Joaquin Hansen. Um, just a nasty battle. These guys are just, <laughs> like, this is the one guy swinging, and this is the other guy, and they're just swinging and knocking down each other and doing all types of craziness. Both of them getting 
get like some mission attempts. It was a nasty, crazy fight. Amazing fight. An absolutely amazing fight. If you haven't seen it, what were you doing in 2008? You know, figure it out. In 2009, don't miss these fights. All right, amazing fight. Um, I'm gonna skip fighter of the year and get back to that later. Let's go to uh, along the line of fight of the year. Let's go to beat down of the year. Um, until I kind of was looking into it, I really thought, and I'm gonna give it away early. I really thought GSP versus Fitch was gonna be the beat down of the year. He blasted him. He, he, he repeatedly could have knocked him out. Um, he, he, he landed some kicks that... It's just... It was a long-ass beatdown. And it didn't stop. It continued forever. It, it, it seemed like it still could be happening. Unless, you know, you would have told me, Oh, it stopped. I saw it, so I know it's over. But if not, I was like, Is he still beating his ass down? Because that was nasty. And Fitch was not going to quit. So, that was a big one. We've got Brock Lesnar versus Heath Herring. What do we have? We had Brock Lesnar throw that straight, that like, that like Superman straight. It wasn't a Superman punch. It was like, <coughs> and then uh, after that, Keith Herring rolled backwards. Like, oh my God. He might have done six or seven rolls, ended up against the cage. Bow. And then Brock Lesnar was like, ah, and this went for like the, the, the spear. Like, ah. Um. Luckily, nobody was killed at that point, because if they would have hit heads, we would have had our first UFC death. Um, so, you know. Then we had basically Brock dominating dude for the next 15 minutes. Getting from behind, punching under, punching over, punching around. Just dude's head was... Just all beat up. And then we had dude lassoing him. Laughing. Riding him like a bull, pointing. It was it was just all out humiliation beat down. Um enough of that. We had Mayhem Miller over Shibata in Dream. Seven minutes of straight uh meanness. Just I could finish you at any given time. Like that's the difference between Brock Lesnar versus Herring. Brock Lesnar couldn't finish Herring, he couldn't do it. Same thing with GSP versus Fitch. Just couldn't do it. But in the Mayhem Miller versus Shibata fight, he could have finished them. And within 25 seconds, he would have been like, take down, switch up, rear naked choke, arm bar, uh, Kimura, anything you wanted. It would just beat you up for a little bit. But he was kind of like, punch, 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 punch. Then he beat up a little bit. I don't want up, elbow, up. Okay. Punch him. All right. Knee, knee, knee. It was nasty. And then eventually the ref was like, yo, this is enough. Enough is enough. Enough. So he stopped that fight. Um, but what I'm gonna have to give it to, I, I, I counted it, this is my own little, this is my own little, uh, whatever you want to call it, sheet here, K stands for kicks, this is a mirror image, K stands for kicks, P stands for punches, and N, N stands for, well that was dumb as hell, just because I needed to, N stands for knees, yeah, I know there's a K, y'all, but the different kicks, knees, you know what I mean? You don't want to have K and K. Confusing. Anyways, the point here is this happened in between 4 minutes and 24 seconds and 3 minutes and 15 seconds. That's just over a minute. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 knees. Let me make sure. 5, 10, 15, 20. 10 times 5. 50 knees, y'all. 50. 50 knees. And then a few punches. 7 punches. And then, sorry, 4 punches. And then 7 kicks. Ben Saunders over the grappling or punching dummy. No disrespect. Brandon Wolf. He just grabbed it like a bow, 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 bow. Punch. Bow, bow. Kick. Bow, 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 bow. bow. Bow, bow, bow. It was nasty. It was nasty. And to make matters worse, the first kick that Ben Saunders threw was below the belt. So he started the fight off like, bow, below the belt. He was like, oh, man. And it only got worse. Um, Brandon Wolf didn't throw one punch. His whole fight looked like this. 
Oh, damn, my nuts. Okay, at least I know it can't get much worse than that. And then he had like a grapefruit. Do I have a hair on my... Damn, I got another hair. Wait a second now. What the hell? Alright. Then he had a grapefruit. Oh, there it is. Damn it. My dog, man. A grapefruit on his head, man. Nasty. Nasty. Looked like Rockman back in the day from a boxing match. Just a big ass, like... He had like another... It like, looked like a alien coming out. You know how the alien come out of the chest? It looked like it was coming out of his head, man. Beat down of the year goes to Ben Saunders. If y'all have not seen that fight, watch it, man. Crazy fight. All right. Event of the year. I'm gonna go uh, runners up. We've got Affliction Band. What happened there? Uh, I mean, we have Megadeth. Let's leave that alone. They had some audio problems. They had some first-time kinks that they had to get, you know, figured out for the next one, which is coming up. But we had Vitor Belfort knockout Terry Martin. Could have been one of the knockout runner-ups for the year. Uh, we had Arlovsky um, over Ben Rothwell. We had Josh Barnett also could have been a runner-up for a knockout over Pedro Hizzo. And then, of course... We had the main event, which also could have been a runner-up for a beatdown. Oh, damn, I can't believe I missed this one. For beatdown of the year. Still wouldn't give it to him. But for beatdown of the year, Fedor over Tim Sylvia, where in 36 seconds, he just went up on like, he always does it. Body first, just to make you pop, pop head. And then, ah, 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 ah. Take down. Ah, 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 ah. Watch me. Choked out. Awesome card. Affliction van. Then we have uh, second or first runner up. UFC 87. We had GFC GSP versus Fitch. You had Brock Lesnar versus Smith Herring. You had Manny Gambarian over Rob Emerson. Or oh, sorry, under Rob Emerson. Uh, he tried to get up there. Y'all know what happened, and if you don't figure it out, you had Florian put himself in a situation where everybody knew Huerta really wasn't coming at his level, and then you had Maya over McDonald. That's and then some other stuff happened too, but that's a good card. Um, tied with that, or maybe a little bit better, I would say is uh, the ultimate, the last card of the year, where you had. Rampage Jackson getting his revenge over Vanderlei Silva. Um, you had Noguera um, being bested by uh, Frank Mir in a very dominant performance. You had the other main event. Oh, Rashad Evans handling his business against Forrest Griffin. And then you had the quick destruction of Mustafa El Turk by the elbows and hands of Chet Congo. In that fight, Mustafa El Turk's face went from normal to extremely abnormal in like 15 seconds. He's like, he's got him down, and then he's like, ah, 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 and just do these nasty elbows, and then hammer, 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 hammer. Ah, oh, like, wow, stop that fight before dude doesn't remember who he ever was. But I still say that's, you know, second best. The best card of the year for me was UFC 84. Here you had BJ Penn over Sean Shirk. After the third round, Sean Shirk could not continue. You had Vandalay Silva over Keith Jardine with the rape choke knockout nastiness. In what I did not consider to be a, an overly exciting fight except for the ending... And me, like, hoping the whole time that another outcome would have happened. It was Tito Ortiz versus Machida. Um, Machida did what he does. He stayed evasive. He threw some nice switch kicks. He said nice judo takedowns. 
two points. He had a nice karate for a Taekwondo takedown. That at the end of the fight, he, he did a nice knee. And then he jumped on him with like a minute left, threw some little whatever punches, and then Tito put that triangle choke up, and almost finished the triangle choke slash armbar. Um, didn't get it, but it was an exciting fight of sorts. And then you had Thiago Silva versus Antonio Mendez, where Mendez came out, threw a kick, Thiago Silva blocked it, and went through his hand, reverberated rever through his head, Dude was Daisy had to go for the takedown, had to get back to the, uh, the submission. Um, you had Yoshida over Copenhagen, just came through with the easy beatdown. You had the uh, stun gun Kim over Jason Tan uh, by some nasty elbows. Uh, Pal Harris made his UFC debut with a quick armbar submission over Salvary. And uh, Carwin, Shane Carwin, makes short work of Kristen Welch. I think he had so much uh, excitement, so many finished fights, so many good um, performances. I say that UFC 84 uh, was the best card of the year. And then we've got Bad Call of the Year. Um, bad Call of the Year. All right, let's see. Number one, not number one, but like runners up. Um, the Yama Pit. And I think that was in 2008. Um, that's a bad call. Don't do that. That's horrible. The Yama Pit was bad. They wanted to put the curved uh, edges around the ring because it was supposed to keep people standing. And what ended up happening is people would get backed up into the cage and then they'd trip because it was kind of like stepping on like a, like a step that you couldn't protect yourself from. So you'd back up, up, oh, up. Oh. So everything that they wanted, the little elevation on the edges to do, it ended up working against them. The fights were horrible. Butterbean tried to throw kicks. That was horrible. There was <clears throat> the, the announcer who sounded like a cancer throat patient. Like after he had like the little and 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 and, 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 and in the right corner. You had that guy. Um the announcers were horrendous. The it was just all around bad. That was the worst show of the year in MMA. So that was a bad call. The Yama put as a whole. That was a bad call. Um, bad call of the year. The Iron Ring. BT. All right. You guys have extra, like extra special bad stuff. And, and Iron Ring beat it all, in my opinion. Um, it was the worst display of MMA and the best display of ignorance and stupidity on so many levels. Um, some of the greatest quotes ever came from the Iron Ring. For those who have never seen the Iron Ring, don't. It's not on anymore. I didn't want to resurrect the Iron Ring by bringing it up. I'm sure it had been forgotten and wiped out of the minds of many. I'm sorry for those who forgot this existed. Um, I will never bring it up again past this point. Um, same thing with the Yama Pit, guys. Don't ever watch the Yama Pit. If you ever see on my shirt, I survived the Yama Pit. <clears throat> Those people deserve respect. Those guys are like like veterans. Like They went to war and they survived something heavy. Back to the Iron Ring. Some of the greatest quotes ever. Somebody said, you can't, one of the coaches, ain't nobody want, forget it with the English, ain't nobody won no fights on their back. Nobody's won a fight from their back in MMA. That's your advice. Uh, too much, too much hugging and going on. These guys were extremely against anything that had to do with grappling in MMA. Uh, and lastly, something that was said uh, or done, there were people in submission attempts, and the fight was stood up. Guy had dude in the head and arm choke, and was. Had it sunk in, it was just waiting, because that's all it takes. It's a blood choke, so, you know, you can hold your breath all you want, but after a certain amount of time, the blood's not going to get to your brain, you will pass out, fight's over. He's holding it in, he's sunk down, he got him in, ref stands, the, stands them up in the middle of the submit. That's a bad call of the year. Uh, bad call of the year, Herb Dean officiating the Noguera-Mir fight. 
you know what? I've come to grips. I've come to terms with it. The decision to stop the fight, not even that bad of a call. I mean, the dude did get knocked down three times. He was getting completely dominated. I don't think this would have been one of those situations where Nogueira would have came back. Looking back at it, unfortunately, damn. So it's not even that he made the decision to stop the fight. The idea, the bad call was the, the commission putting Herb quick stoppage, early stoppage Dean in front, uh, in charge of this event, of this development. Um, a lot of other refs could have been in there, and they probably wouldn't have stopped it as fast, if you want to call it fast or early, whatever. The idea is somebody else probably could have done that job, and instead they had Herb Dean. Hey. Um, you know, uh, and, and, and the runner-up, Caleb Stearns choosing MMA over track, bad call. It, he had to train to know that he was so fast and so quick and stamina. He had a broken foot. So if you can run that fast and avoid somebody trying to knock you out in a little cage for 15 minutes, you should be doing another sport. You can do anything you want to do as long as it involves running. Long distance, check. Um, sprinting, check. The first ever sprinting long distance, check. So that's a bad call. Caleb Starnes, no disrespect. The Olympics are coming around. See what you can do. Obviously, the winner of bad call of the year is Anthony Rumble Johnson losing via, via eye poke to Steve Mazzagatti. Repeatedly saying to Burns, watch out for those jabs, stop poking him in the eye, get his hand was broke, so he was jabbing with his fingers. Yeah, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, like four times at least. Finally, the last time he throws out the jab, throws the uppercut, the eye poke, I guess it went in his eye. He fell down, he screamed like a little girl. I'm like, wow, that was must have been a serious uppercut because I've never heard somebody <laughs> scream like that. Nope, he actually needed to get surgery on his eye. Mazagati said he apologized. He, he he thought, oops, my bad, that was a bad call. And then the, the athletic commission did not overturn the loss. So he actually has a loss via eye poke. Um, so that's a, kind of like the share, the share of the award. The commission for not overturning the decision, and then Mazagati for making the decision in the first place. And finally, Fighter of the Year, let me make a quick note that Alvarez would have defeated Shinya Aoki on December 31st. Alvarez, by far, would have been the Fighter of the Year. He would have beaten Hanson, Kawajiri, Dita, and Aoki all in the same year. He did not beat Aoki, therefore he cannot be Fighter of the Year. Shinya Aoki, if he would have been able to fight, um, if he would have won his fight against Hanson, then he would have been fighter of the year. He would have defeated Cavaconti, Eddie Alvarez, Hanson, uh, Kyle Uno, and then two other dudes. But anyway, it would have been like six wins in 2008. He didn't win. Tough luck. Um, Anderson Silva, he is definitely up there, I think. Um, however, you know, I'm not giving it to, to Anderson Silva. You know, he did um, defeat Dan Henderson. Um, he went up to Irving and put a smile under his eye. He defeated Patrick Cote via uh, Bruce Lee and Ali movements and then Jedi Mind Power to, to bust through ACL up. Um, he had a big year. Not the fight of the year, I don't think. Uh, Musasi, he won the Dream Middleweight, tur middleweight Tournament. He defeated Dennis Kang by submission. Melvin Manho, um, he had the beautiful up kick against... Uh, Jacques Array, um, and, and a few other wins. Alistair Overeem, uh, he came out of nowhere, and by out of nowhere, I mean nowhere he wanted to be, uh, and nowhere anybody cared about him. He was just um, losing, 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 and then all of a sudden had a huge year, all the way up until the end of the year when he went out in the in the Muay Thai in, in the K1 ruled belt and blasted Badahari. Still, I can't give it to dude. I gotta say, uh, 
Did I ever say Rashad Evans yet? No, I didn't. Um, I don't think he is the fighter of the year. However, he definitely handled his business. Rashad Evans uh, defeated Chuck Liddell via KO of the year. He defeated Forrest Griffin. Um, and in the middle of all that, did the little thing. And then through the hook still. Um, and, and then there's Tiago Alves. Who, uh, who who defeated Kyle Parisian, um, he defeated Koscheck, and he defeated uh, Hughes. That's that's a real good year. But he didn't, you know, maybe he needed to get that one more fight. Um, he needed to get, you know, maybe that fight that he couldn't. It wasn't his choice, but he wants to get that title shot. Got to say, the fighter of the year, amazingly, off of two performances, and both of them pretty short. Frank Mir, fighter of the year, put your hands together for Mir. He went up against, uh, first of all, he, he was injured. You know all his whole story. Um, came back, was going up against Lesnar. Everybody, I said, look, Lesnar can win this fight as long as he doesn't get leg locked. That's exactly what happened. Frank Mir got that. Boom, locked it in. That's Lesnar tapping. And then the fight against Noguera, he came through, did his business. He only fought two times in 2008. Uh, but I think what he did in 2008 was more, uh, not impressive, but just it meant more. Um, it, he had a great year. 2008 is over. It's been over for like five days. My bad, I'm a little late. Again, I hope this quality wasn't too bad. Turn your headphones up or whatever. 2009. It's going to be a big year. There's a lot of good cards. I'm going to go. I think I got to buy a new mic. So I'm going to buy a mic. Get back here for the two UFCs in January. We got Henderson versus um, Franklin. I'll give you a little preview. Somebody's going to get the ass whooped. Um, we've got BJ Penn versus um, GSP in, in, in a super fight. Um, that's going to be a tough one to call. We've also got all the other fights on those cards. We've got Affliction, January 24th. I'm going to be there live. See if I can see history get made. It's going to get made regardless. If he, if Fedor loses, that's history. If he wins, Dana can't say anything. Nobody can say anything. If, if, if Fedor wins against Arlovsky, everybody has to just shut. Like, I have to say S-T-F-U. they got to just shut the bleep up. Because Fedor already is the greatest, but MMA, y'all, it's important. Peace.